guys, um, do you want to understand the structure of lenticels or you want to understand how it works? Well, we'll be doing that in this video and we'll also be looking at some questions under lenticels, okay? My name is Divine Geek Tundu Boise Olojiko. Welcome to Divine Geek Lectures, okay? I'm a newly admitted student into the University of Ibadan Medical School and I'm doing these videos for you guys to understand your high school and your senior secondary school subjects and so that you can also get the admission that you want, all right? So subscribe and after doing that, um, click the notification bell by the side of that subscribe button, okay? So let's get into this. Um, lenticels. Lenticels are involved in gaseous exchange, okay? We know that lenticels are involved in gaseous exchange. And in my other video, I talked about gaseous exchange in plants and I said that there are three main pores through which gaseous exchange occurs. We have what the stomata, we have the lenticels, we have the roots and the hairs in young plants, okay? So I talked about stomata in another video. Please do not forget to watch that. Watch that because um, I'll be repeating some of the knowledge I actually shared with you guys here, okay? So today we are going to be looking at lenticels, all right? Now, lenticels. What are lenticels? Lenticels are used for gaseous exchange. Now, lenticels are pores, are small pores or small openings found or present in the back of um, woody stems and roots, okay? Let me say that again. Lettuce cells are what? They are small holes, pores, or openings found in the back of stems and roots, okay? So now we know that they are found in stems and roots, and they are found specifically where? In the back, in the back. The spelling of the back is B-A-R-K and not B-A-C-K, B-A-R-K. So what is bark? Um, bark is the outermost part, okay? It's the outermost part of um, woody parts of a plant, okay? Now let's take trees for instance. Um, let's say the tree trunk or the branches, these are the woody parts, all right? The outermost part of this, um, the, the trunk or the branches, the outermost part, is what is what is called the bark okay so now um let me illustrate this for you you said that what lettuce cells are small holes or openings um, or pores found in the back of what woody um, stems and roots okay so now let's um let me give you a cross section of what the bark is like so now let's say let's take a tree trunk for instance Um, let's say this is it. The outermost part, which is this part, is what? Is the back, okay? As I said before, the back is the outermost part of what? Um, the woody what parts of a plant. So let's say um, this is the outermost part. So it is the back, okay? This is the back. Now in this back, we have something. We have this, and we call it the cork cambium, okay? This is the cork cambium, and um, below it, just below it, we have what? Just below it, we have the secondary cortex, okay? Just below it, we have the secondary cortex. These are the parts of the back. Now, we have also this layer. And this layer consists of cells which are what's gotten from the cork cambium. Okay? The cells here, they are gotten from the cork cambium. And this is called what? The cork layer. This whole layer here is called the cork layer. It's the cork layer. Okay? So, these are the parts of the back and then um, one thing we'll note is that we know that what the lettuce cells are small holes or openings in what in the back of stems and roots okay so um, let's say for example the opening is here this 
this is the small hole or what this is the small hole okay now as we know that what here is what the cork layer here is the cork cambium and here is the what here is the second big cortex okay so um this part here is what we are going to take and what enlarge into this diagram for you to see it clearly okay so this is actually the lens itself and it is drawn larger for you to see you can see what the cock cambium the cock cambium this is it and below it just as i said before below it we have the secondary cortex okay below it we have the secondary cortex above it we have uh, the cock layer the cells in the cock layer are gotten from what the cock cambium and then we have what this this um, outermost layer we have the epidermis okay and now we have what the hole or the pore the small opening and that is what the lens itself okay so before we go over to um, the gases exchanged in what a lens itself um, I want to explain something a little bit about how a lens itself is made um, a lens itself is made um, during the secondary thickening of the plant. It is made during the secondary thickening of the plant. And that is also the stage whereby the bark is made. That is whereby the bark is made. Okay? So it's made during what? The secondary thickening of a plant, which is also the time that the bark is also made. Okay? So um, this is the lens cell. And as I said before, that cells in the cork layer are what? Are produced from the cork cambium okay now normally the cork cambium produces in regular cells you can look at these parts you can see that they are regular they are well shaped okay it produces what regular cells that are arranged what in rows properly okay they are arranged in rows and they are compacted okay they are compacted there's little um, space between the cells and then the space between cells, they are called what? It's called intercellular um, space. So there's little intercellular space present. Okay? But now in the making of lens cells, what happens is that the cork cambium begins to produce um, cork cells which are irregularly shaped. Okay? They are irregularly shaped. And um, they are not arranged as well as these are. Okay? They are not arranged as well as these are. So there's a lot of what? Intercellular space in between them. Alright, that is how um, the, the lentil cell begins what, to form. So when this is, um, they are produced, more of it is produced until there are so much that it produces a hole or a pore or it ruptures what? This epidermis. Okay? And by doing so, it what? It produces a hole or a pore and that is what? The lentil cell. Okay, so that's how what the lentil cell is actually made. So, um, what are the gases that are involved here? What are the gases that are being exchanged? Okay, so um, we know that, as I said before, lentil cells are used um, for gaseous exchange. They are involved in gaseous exchange. What are the gases? Okay, um, involved. They are what CO two, O two, and H two. Alright, that's carbon dioxide, oxygen, and um, water. Okay, water vapor. Water vapor. Alright, so um, these gases, um, the plant needs to what, exchange them. It needs to be exchanged, okay, between what the environment and the plant. Okay, between what the environment and the plant. That's why um, the lettuce cell is present in this what, in this stem or root. Okay, so. Um, we see that the cells in the plant, the cells in the plant carry out respiration. And in respiration, there's an intake of oxygen and there's a, a release of what? Carbon dioxide. Okay? So since they need oxygen for what? Their respiration, they oxygen what? Comes in. And what? The CO2 produced as a result of respiration goes out through the same channel. Okay? So oxygen what? Oxygen comes in oxygen comes in 
and um, as a result of what their respiration, they release what CO2, that's um, carbon dioxide, and what? It comes out, okay? It comes out. Now, lastly, we also have what? The release of water vapor. They also what? Release water vapor. Okay, now um, we will note that in plants there's something called transpiration, and that's the movement of water from the roots um, through the stem and it um, goes out as water vapor from the leaves through the stomata opening. Okay, through the stomata opening. Um, that's transpiration. So, water vapor in that process passes what out through the stomata opening, but also. Um, some of this um, water present during transpiration also comes out through the what the lenticels, but it comes out in minimal amount. Okay, amounts it comes out in what minimal amounts. It's very very small. Okay, but what water vapor comes out. Okay, so the other the gases that comes out. H2O. Okay, so H2O is one of the gases that comes out. So in the lens cell, um, all oxygen comes in, CO2 comes out, and what? H2O still comes out. That is, oxygen gas comes in, and carbon dioxide gas goes out, and the water vapor goes out also. Okay, so um, that is what those are the gases exchanged in lentil cells. All right. Now um, let's note we might want to know what are the differences between lentil cells and stomata. Okay, what are the differences between lentil cells and stomata? For stomata, they are all they are um, they are not always open. Okay, but lentil cells are always open. Stomata can close and open. Okay, but lentil cells are always what open. Um, stomata are only found in area green parts of plants. Okay, I said that before in the other video. Do go to watch that. Okay, um, they are found in only what green area parts of plants, um, and that's what those are parts above the ground level. But now I told you that lentil cells are found in both stems and in roots. Okay, so that's another difference that was um, stomata cannot be found in the roots, okay? They are only found in green aerial parts of the plants. But what lentil cells are found in what stems and they are also they are also found in roots. Now lentil cells cannot be found in all plants, okay? You know that it's not all plants that are what that are woody. Okay, this is found in bark. Barks and barks they are found in what woody parts of what the plant. It's not all plants that are woody, so it won't be all plants that will have what um, lentil cells. But stomata is present in all plants because of all plants they have what? They have green parts and they have leaves. Okay? So those are the differences between what? Lentil cells and what? And stomata. Okay? So now let's go over to some questions in lentil cells. And we have a question from Jam. And the question for why these are example is um the first question is um, the function of lentil cells is what a to remove excess water in plants b to absorb water from the atmosphere c for gaseous exchange d to absorb light e to store food uh, what's the answer from the lessons i've explained you will find out that the answer is what? C. The function of what? Lentil cells is what? It's meant for gaseous exchange. And we looked at the gases that are being involved in the exchange. Okay? It's not used to remove excess water from plants because I even explained it to you that it's only minimal amount. It's only the minimal amount that what? It releases. It takes out. Okay? Also, um, it just takes out small amounts of what? Water vapor. The rest of what, um, the water, the, the rest of the water vapor that actually escapes from that, um, passes more through the stomata 
on open air. So A is what? A is U1. B to absorb water from the atmosphere. Now nah, it doesn't do this. Okay? C it does it. This is the answer. It doesn't absorb light. It doesn't store food. Okay? The right answer is C. Now let's look at number two. The structure for gaseous exchange in breathing roots are A stomata, B lentil cells, C cuticle, D mitochondria. Okay, now um, the answer here is lentil cells. As I said before, when I define lentil cells, I said that what well, they are small pores or openings found what found in the back of stems and roots. Okay, the answer is lentil cells. Mitochondria are not used. Um, they are not used for what? Gaseous exchange. Cuticle uh, is not even present in roots. Okay, so this is out. Cuticle can, um, there's a type of transpiration just that, just like I told you that in lentil cells, um, H2O, that's water vapor, comes out. Cuticle, it also happens with cuticle, but cuticle is not even present in what? In roots. Okay, now for stomata, as I told you before, it's not present in roots, it's only found in green parts of the plants that are above or the ground level. So this isn't the answer. The answer is what? The answer is lentil cells. Now also I said I'll talk about um, root hairs, which are what? They are hair-like projections from what? The roots. Um, they are also involved in gaseous exchange. They are also involved in gaseous exchange. They what? Um, take in what O2 and give out what? Um, CO2. And also know that what they also help to bring in what water and mineral salts. How does um, oxygen get into this wood uh, um, hairs? It actually diffuses into the water that it's what it takes in. Okay, so that's what it takes. And I really hope you learned um, all. Um, you learned um, something important today about lentil cells. If you liked it, please um, like like the video write comment and if you've not subscribed please subscribe press that subscribe button and also click the notification button all right so that you get notified whenever i am upload a new video all right god bless have a blessed day thank you for watching see you in my next video